With its distinctive sailback, Dimetrodon is one of the most recognizable prehistoric creatures, yet it is still often mistakenly labeled a dinosaur, despite being more closely related to mammals. The earliest known Dimetrodon fossil was an upper jaw fragment found in Canada in the 1840s, initially believed to belong to a dinosaur. It wasn't until the late 1870 years that species such as Dimetrodon limbatus from the Midwest and southern United States were identified as part of an older and separate group called Pelicosaurs. Although some scientists early on proposed a connection between pelicosaurs and mammals, for several decades the dominant theory was that they were a branch of rhynchocephalian reptiles, more closely related to modern tuataras. By the 1910 years, they were finally linked back to mammals as early synapsids, though the terminology, mammal-like reptiles, continued to be used. Because of this, Dimetrodon was often depicted with a distinctly reptilian appearance, a scaly, lizard-like body in a belly-dragging stance, a crocodile-like head, and a sail that looked overly shrink-wrapped based on modern lizard models. Early illustrations sometimes showed a short, stumpy tail, as its true tail length was not confirmed until the 1920 years. In the late 20th century, advances in classification helped clarify the relationship between reptiles and synapsids, redefining reptiles as sauropsids and recognizing synapsids as a separate lineage of amniotes. This has led to a more nuanced view of Dimetrodon as an early protomammal rather than a heavily reptilian creature. We now know there were over a dozen species of Dimetrodon living during the early to mid-Permian, approximately 295 to 272 million years ago. While most species have been found in North America, a newly identified species from Germany suggests a broader range across Pangaea than previously believed. Dimetrodon limbatus was one of the larger species, reaching about 3 meters long. Its skull was narrow and tall, with high-set eyes and two types of teeth, indicating specialized feeding strategies. The structure of its nasal cavity suggests it had a keen sense of smell, and recent research indicates it might have had a higher metabolic rate, possibly approaching warm-bloodedness. However, Dimetrodon likely had poor hearing, lacking external ears, and may have been functionally deaf to airborne sounds, relying instead on detecting ground vibrations through its jaw. No direct skin impressions have been found for Dimetrodon. Although scaly skin has been documented on varanipids, once classified as early synapsids but now potentially true reptiles, the extent of scaliness in Dimetrodon remains uncertain. Some evidence hints at rows of rectangular scuts on its belly and tail, but the closest comparison may be the distant therapsid estemonosuchus, which had a smooth, glandular skin resembling a hairless mammal's. The famous sail on its back, created by elongated vertebral spines, is thought to have been covered in a more complex tissue pattern than once imagined. The base of the spines would have been embedded in back muscles, the midsection wrapped in skin webbing, and the upper tips potentially bare and projecting freely, creating a spikier silhouette, while traditionally assumed to function for thermoregulation, the sail's role has been reconsidered. The lack of significant blood vessel networks and the inconsistent correlation between sail size and body size across different Dimetrodon species suggest it might have served more for visual communication, possibly for display and signaling, with vibrant colors enhancing its appearance. Fossilized trackways also reveal that Dimetrodon didn't drag its belly like a lizard but moved in a more elevated posture, similar to a crocodilian high walk, indicating a more active lifestyle. As a terrestrial predator, it likely preyed on various Permian creatures, including amphibians like Ariops and Diplocolis, as well as the freshwater shark Xenocanthus.